now I have teeth. Do you remember these? In 2013, that's more than 10 years ago, Google Glass dropped and we thought we are about to live in the future. Heads up displays, information at a glance and the future was looking augmented until reality kind of hit and Google Glass flopped. But hey, that's the beauty of tech, right? Humanity pushes the boundaries, learns from its bumps and then keeps innovating. Those are really old emails from like eight years ago. Now mid-2023, Apple announced the Vision Pro and painted a new pretty picture, didn't they? Seamless augmented reality overlays, hyper-realistic virtual worlds and productivity like never before. Imagine collaborating with creatives across the globe in a virtual conference room, editing your photos and videos on the largest possible screen or having a concert right in your living room all through the sleek minimalist headset. This promotional hype on one side and the staggering, absolutely wicked price point of at a minimum three and a half thousand dollars for the base model set the stage for high expectations by consumers, tech enthusiasts, photographers and filmmakers. And in less than a week, we will know if these expectations can be met. And yes, I sold a kidney and pre-ordered one. I'll pick it up on Friday. In the meantime, let's embark on what I call critical dreaming and discuss five expectations that we have of the app Apple Vision Pro. Three of them are optimistic, two not so much, so make sure that you stick around to the end of the video. Let's be honest, at launch, the core strength of this device lay squarely in the entertainment experience. And heck am I stoked about this. An immersive large screen set in a dimmed interactive surrounding from Mount Hood to Tatooine, all in HDR, which is unique to the Apple Vision Pro compared to other headsets. Sign me up. Now, one of the reasons why this device is so expensive is because it has an Apple logo on it. Actually, does it have an Apple logo on it? I don't think there is an Apple logo on it. Well, then it's because of the premium hardware they put into it, namely the screens, the M2 chip, and the staggering amount of sensors to make this experience as smooth and real as possible. Now, unlike all the other VR headsets that are out there in the market right now, the Apple Vision Pro is the only one that features two very innovative and very expensive 4K micro OLED screens. Now, OLED we all know from our premium TVs, right? The best image quality, rich blacks, but the problem with OLED is, is that the distance between the pixels is pretty large. So if you want to shrink it down, you may not have the pixel density you need in order to have a high resolution. So the innovation really comes in with the micro OLEDs that rather than being built on or printed on glass, they're actually printing it on silicon. And if you know anything about our innovative cycle here in our world, we've become really good at printing tiny, tiny things on silicon like our transistors to make these ships faster and smaller. That results in a pixel pitch of 7.5 microns, which is smaller than a human blood cell. Tiny, 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 tiny. Now I personally cannot wait to watch 3D movies on it. People who've already tried it out said that the 3D experience is very different from what you know from in the cinema. It's much more immersive and intense. So can't wait to see that. Disney Plus is launching a couple of titles like Endgame and The Force Awakens. So really stoked about that personally. And also Apple offers 3D movies in the Apple TV ad at no extra cost to the standard version. So. I'll, I'll be, I'll be in the little, little 3D world. Now, one thing that I'm a little skeptical about is actually the sound quality and the speakers that are built in. I assume that they use a combination of just sound audio and bone induction, the same technology that actually Google Glass used 10 years ago to create the surround sound that they're praising. But I don't know if it can really live up to like a proper surround system with a subwoofer and give that bass. But also you can obviously link it up with your AirPods. They're good, but we will see, we will see. And the other bummer is that uh, at launch, there won't be a Netflix or YouTube app that is natively built for the Apple Vision Pro. So you would have to go through the Safari browser. Now let's be real, while it looks like a sleek premium device and worlds better than other VR headsets, I don't think you will see many people wearing this device outside. For one, it looks very dorky and does not make you look more attractive, despite the fact that it yells like, look at me, I have a lot of disposable income. And that's the other problem. Do you really want to wear it on public transportation or in the park and make yourself a prime mugging victim? 
Now when it comes to the weight of the device, we already heard a lot of early reviewers mentioning that at least it feels like a heavy device. Now we know it's between 600 and 650 grams. Now my expectation is that the weight is likely the bottleneck that will hamper prolonged continuous use of the device unless you invest in a cervical neck traction device. You already look dorky anyways and what are $22? Don't even get the cleaning cloth for that. I believe. What we don't know yet either is how much heat it emits when you use it for a longer time. At the end of the day, it is a MacBook strapped to your face and it's a computer that emits and radiates heat. So to be confirmed, to be seen. The battery life is two to two and a half hours. So for prolonged use outside, you likely want to invest in another $200 battery. A $200 battery, could it be more Apple? Actually, the battery pack has a logo on it. So I think it's worth $200. Also, did you notice that in all the promotional videos and photos, there is no footage of people using it on the bus, in the car, on the train, somewhere outside. The only time they show it is on the plane. Now, if people don't use this outside in the real world, this may actually cause a marketing problem for Apple. iPhones, when they first launch, could be easily passed to your friends. You could first time experience the touch screen and see what it feels like and what it looks like and what it can do. When the AirPods first launched, the white little dots that everyone started walking around with, I thought it was stupid, but then I got myself some and they were just out there and very visible. And same for the laptops. The glowing Apple logo was a staple in the coffee shops everywhere and was just saying, hey, I'm creative, I'm cool, I'm hip, I'm using Apple products and I have disposable income. But with the Apple Vision Pro, you're gonna be stuck on your couch and not gonna walk around with it. Now, I'm curious how Apple is gonna solve that marketing challenge because I doubt that people will walk around with those things outside and it's not that easy to share the experience unless you're like coming home for a for a little friend's party or so and and they let you try it so under the bottom line i expect myself to mostly use it on the couch and at my desk where i can also plug it into the power outlet and have neck support very important now, as photographers and filmmakers, we spend a tremendous amount of our lifetime in front of our computers editing, which can be exhausting and dreary. I pre-ordered the Apple Vision Pro under the remote promise that it may make my editing process more inspiring, more immersive and more productive. Well, this is the major use case why I personally and possibly many other photographers and filmmakers are getting the Vision Pro. I have some doubts due to the aforementioned weight and possible heat. Now, the big question is, can we spend hours on end in this headset or will it cause neck pain, dizziness, eye strain or headaches? None of these early testers had it for longer than an hour. So we will have to test it out ourselves at the end of the week and see what the physical impact is. Apple has yet to confirm which iPad apps work on the Vision Pro or what native photo and video editing apps are being released. I can see that at launch, the Final Cut Pro iPad app will be available and we've seen in promotional material that the DaVinci Resolve app appeared there. So those iPad apps will likely work, would be my guess. And there's enough power in the M2 chip with 16 gigs of unified memory. So that is definitely not a problem, but I wonder also how do you connect your hard drive to it or will you have to add it all from the clouds? Now there is a USB port, USB-C port on the battery pack and you may be able, I don't know, we will see, plug in a hard drive. So I'm setting my expectation personally that for video and photo editing, I'll be using it actually as an extension of my MacBook Pro, expand the screens, have more space to work with, be in a sort of like shielded environment so that I'm not getting distracted, use my keyboard, my trackpads and my other editing devices and use it that way. That way I can obviously also edit from my hard drives. Now imagine you're flying back from a shoot and you want to get started with the edit on the plane right away because deadlines. 
And instead of editing on a 14 or 16 inch screen that everybody can see your confidential project on, you're in this immersive environment, shielded from all the distractions with your screens up large, all your tools at hand. This is, this is what gets me excited. This is what I imagine I could use the Apple Vision Pro for when I'm on the go specifically. Now, the one thing around video and photo editing we have to evaluate once we have our hands on it though, is the question of color accuracy. Apple claims a 92% DCI-P3, and this is quite a few percentages of the 98% that most video and photo editing monitors sport. So I guess we have to see and wait. Literally see and wait for another couple of days. Yes, this is a bold statement. Yes, we may be still a couple of years out. And yes, 3D TVs never found wide adoption. But with Apple leaning into VR headsets, it is a sign of the mere potential of a widespread adoption of VR entertainment. And I can see Hollywood and sports broadcasters specifically more and more leaning into that technology. And with the rollout of the iPhone 15 Pro, now consumers can actually shoot spatial video to capture these very special, unique family moments, those big tentpole events in your life. From early reviewers, we already heard that when these special moments are captured in spatial video, they just pull differently on your emotions because of their realism. Yes, we all know Tony Stark or Darth Vader in 3D or the avatars, but if it's one of your loved ones, oof, it may hit very differently. You can also shoot spatial videos and photos with the Vision Pro, but I think this is a rather awkward, weird experience to capture these special moments with your headset and take a photo. So I personally will likely stick to the phone and also we don't know about the low light quality of these outside cameras. We gotta see, but again, phone might be a little bit more closer. You're closer in the action and you can get in yourself. As of right now, you cannot edit spatial videos in Final Cut Pro, but this is something that Apple said will be coming later this year. And I also think that actually panoramic photos and these photospheres will make a comeback. I personally, I've, I've taken so many photospheres. I don't know if you remember these photospheres from Google and you can take them on your Android phone. Actually, drones can take them too. And I've been doing this for the past 15 years or so. So I have like all these memories and I can't wait to step into these environments again uh, that I've actually used with the Google Daydream thing uh, where you strap in your uh, your phone. Actually, it must have been an Android phone. And then you have these like, like that was my favorite experience of these early VR headsets. Uh, where you can just step into that location, that beautiful place. I took one of the volcano in Iceland and just like even looking around with your phone is insane. So I can't wait to be in that environment, in that virtual reality environment uh, and go back to these places. Much like with the iPhone, the true function and potential of such device comes to life through the apps that are being developed around it. When the iPhone first launched, there was no app store and Apple quickly realized in the second or third generation of the phone that the apps are truly what brings the value to the phone. This time around though, Apple did something different. They announced the device half a year before launch to give developers time to create apps and experiences. But given its limited rollout of an estimated 400,000 units this year, and this is a small number for Apple, I don't expect a flood of apps being available right from the get-go because developers may want to wait and see what the adoption is like. And there is an estimate of 150 native apps being ready at launch and compare this to the nearly 2 million apps that you have available on the App Store for your iPhone. But if, well actually when we will get a more affordable consumer geared version of the Apple Vision that is in its second or third generation, there will be certainly a flood of apps because there will be more consumers to buy them and this is clearly then a business incentive for the developers. In the meantime though, I don't set my expectations at all high for interesting native apps on the on the app store and focus solely on the entertainment experience and how it extends and implements and and fits into my video editing and photo editing workflow.
A lot of hype, a lot of hope, but until we have our hands on the device and on our face by the end of this week, we don't know. I think many people are holding out to see what these real world experiences are like, what people say. They may wait until generation two or three, which is very reasonable and possibly absolutely the right decision for most people. But as early adopters, we get excited about this stuff. Be it Google Glass or Vision Pro, there is something innately exciting and mind stimulating being at the forefront of technology and trying it out and, and tr exploring use cases, trying out workflows and seeing where it goes. I mean, also as a filmmaker, it's inspiring. It's important for us to understand what the creative canvas is in future. So I cannot wait to create content around this. Honestly, maybe hopefully in future we can actually create spatial YouTube videos. That would be sick. Though this week on this channel, we will dive deep once we have our hands on the device and put out a couple of videos that I've already planned. And now is the time for you to drop any questions that you have around this device in the comment section below so that I can go out and test and try it and answer these questions that you have in my upcoming videos. And also now make sure to hit subscribe and hit that bell so that you get notified when the videos are dropping, especially if you are into filmmaking and photography, that will be my angle. Now, whew, that was a longer one than I thought, but have a good morning, have a good night, whenever and wherever you are around this beautiful planet. See you later this week. Bye-bye. Honestly, I can't believe that it's still working. Okay, Glass, take a photo. Ah, there's the camera. Now I have no idea how, how I get this photo down. Dig out an old Android phone, I guess.